Seven. The fight on Capitol Hill over how to support the U.S. economy as the pandemic rages on. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by T. Rowe Price, offering a strategic investing approach with a long-term perspective aimed at helping investors feel confident through a variety of market conditions. Since 1937, T. Rowe Price, invest with confidence. From Marketplace, I'm Sabri Beneshore, in for David Brancaccio, who's on assignment. Senate Republicans are expected to roll out another coronavirus relief package proposal this week. The House has already passed a new $3 trillion relief bill. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer joins me now live to talk about it. Uh, hi, Nancy. Hey, Sabri. So uh, what exactly is on the table here? Well, the Senate will probably have a smaller price tag of around $1 trillion. Senate Republicans are also expected to insist on some liability protections for businesses to protect them from lawsuits if workers or customers get COVID-19 and blame the business owner. Uh, President Trump also says he wants the legislation to include a payroll tax cut. Hmm. What about uh, the extra $600 a week in unemployment payments that workers are now getting? That's a big stumbling block, Sabri. It's ex scheduled to expire at the end of this month. Democrats want it to continue, maybe for the next six months. But Republican leaders say some people are making more money from unemployment than when they were working. They see this $600 as a disincentive to return to work. And Democrats say there aren't enough jobs for all the unemployed workers right now. And if the extra money were cut, it would cause great financial hardship. Is there... Any sense of a compromise on the horizon there at all? Possibly, possibly. Uh, Republicans might be willing to continue with a smaller unemployment subsidy. There's also talk about giving people who return to work a bonus. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said any new subsidy would be no more than 100% of a person's lost wages. All right. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer, thank you so much. You're welcome. Tesla reports its latest quarterly earnings this week, Wednesday. People will be paying extra close attention this time because if the electric car maker reports a profit for the quarter, it could be eligible to join the S&P 500. That's the stock market index of 500 of the largest companies traded in the U.S. Marketplace's Justin Ho has more on what exactly a company gets from joining that club. Really, it's about investment. People have poured billions of dollars into funds that simply buy shares in whatever companies are in the S&P 500. These are known as index funds and exchange-traded funds. So if Tesla's added, they have to buy Tesla stock. Evan Raleigh is a professor at the University of Minnesota. That can boost stock prices, which makes the company's shareholders happy. It also means that those funds would have to buy any new stock the company issues. That could help the company raise cash, says Anil Shivdasani at the University of North Carolina. This could be something that proves to be important for a company like Tesla that, you know, by its very nature is a very capital intensive business. The big institutional investors behind those S&P 500 index funds would also own a bigger share of the company. Shiftasani says that could give them more incentive to try and influence company policy. Institutional investors have become increasingly vocal, proactive. Especially, he says, on environmental and social issues. I'm Justin Ho for Marketplace. Let's do the numbers this morning. The FTSE in London is down seven tenths of a percent. Dow, S and P, and Nasdaq futures are down in the one to three tenths percent range, with the Dow future down fifty-seven points. Ten-year Treasury yield is rising this morning. It's at point six two percent. New York City, once the epicenter of coronavirus in the U.S., enters phase four of reopening today. That's the last phase. Zoos and botanical gardens can open up for outdoor activity at a third capacity. TV and film production can resume. Gatherings of up to 50 people are allowed. Things are not quite back to normal, though. Indoor dining and bars are still not okay. No gyms, museums, or movie theaters either. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance. Protecting your business with specialized coverages for your commercial vehicles. More at ProgressiveCommercial.com. And by X-Chair Office Chair, dynamic variable lumbar support and 10 ergonomic features for maximum support and comfort at xchair.com or 8444-X-Chair. And by Kronos, providing HR solutions for the modern workforce and the people who support them. Learn more at kronos.com.
You know, it has been a rough few years for farmers. They had to deal with a trade war with China that dried up markets and hurt commodity prices. Now the pandemic has thrown the farming industry basically into chaos. Farmers are getting some emergency help this year from the federal government. Marketplace's hub, Marketplace Hub reporter Peggy Lowe of KCUR brings us the story of one Kansas dairy farmer. I caught Jason Schmidt taking a quick break on a hot, windy day on his Grazing Plains dairy farm in central Kansas. Milking started at 4.30 that morning, and this afternoon, he was hoping to get a lot done before the rain came that night. I'm busy putting up some alfalfa hay and hauling some alfalfa hay to get it under cover and also helping Dad with wheat harvest and hauling wheat to the elevator. So it's, it's been a busy day. He runs down his government payments during the last year. The first was to compensate for the Trump administration's trade war with China, which shut markets for conventional crops like corn and soybeans. But Schmidt doesn't grow those and is trying to use sustainable practices like cover crops for grazing cattle. I'm planting weird stuff at different times of the year, and the crops that I raised just did not fall in the program. So I ended up just a fraction of my acreage covered by the trade money. The trade war payment was just a quarter of what he thought he'd get, about $2,000. So then he tried to get a PPP small business loan that was part of the pandemic relief package, but that fell through. Now he's hoping for the emergency direct payments farmers are supposed to get. I should have about eighteen to $20,000 coming through that, which really could help. A University of Missouri agricultural think tank says federal supports will amount to 36 percent of farm income this year. That's worth more than 30 billion dollars, the largest in 20 years. David Widmar, an ag economist at Purdue University, says the payments are band-aids on an already precarious farm economy. Where's the farm economy going to be a year from now? Will we be seeing another round of ad hoc funding or or how, how do we make that adjustment? Jason Schmidt wonders the same thing. Oh, it's it's discouraging. <laughs> it's really discouraging. <laughs> Schmidt guesses that he's now operating at about 50 to 60 percent of the income he thought he'd bring in this year. In Kansas City, I'm Peggy Lowe for Marketplace. And in New York, I'm Sabri Beneshore with the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.